Hello everyone, once again. Um, my name is Katarzyna Nowak-Rybka and I have a pleasure and honor to be here. Uh, I and share some experience, business experience with you. Uh, the experience I have is around 14 years right now. I cherish um, uh, um, a position uh, at objectivity of a business analyst good master. And as strange it may sound, uh, we, held, um, we, we have uh, the Spotify model in our company, in Objectivity, for a few years right now. And uh, this means that I'm head of the business analysis de department with around 40 BAs on board. Um, I have some experience as, as an academic and as a business analyst as a via in variety of assignments. And I also, um, during my... my, um, my, my um, life or experience, business experience, uh, I became a passionate about business analysis. Uh, so some of you may know me from business analysis meetup, which is held in Wrocław, that I have uh, co-founded and I'm an organizer for many years right now. So while I was doing my speech and while I was preparing my presentation, I purposely changed the subject of my presentation from a question to a statement. And I will do my best to prove it right to you today. And as scary it may sound that today's business analyst will become extinct, let's start for a second and crack the words today, what I mean by that. Um, before we can do it, I will give you a short uh, story. Uh, I'm sure that you know that the business analysts travel a lot. Who of you do that right now? To, to the client? Some to some of you, a few, okay. Um, <laughs> and I, ha I, I had started sometimes without flying because I have uh, two small girls. Um, but I'm up in the air again and I would like to share some uh, thoughts and experiences and some afterthoughts about my last trip to Germany. Okay, point one. Instead of a b uh, paper boarding card, I used a, a mobile phone to have it one hour before the flight two minutes of clicks. I've used a, a QR code also to uh, check my hand luggage. Also, without uh, anything with me, on, only my uh, mobile phone. Uh, no one that day asked me about my personal details, nor the destination where I'm going. Uh, point three, uh, I booked a hotel room um, with a touch of the button, so only PC and I. Uh, point four, giving, getting to a um, business meeting, uh, I took a taxi, also cashless and done with a mobile phone. Point five, after a long day at work, you know how the meetings are, uh, I did some good mother, good wife uh, job. Uh, I've ordered a uh, food from Tesco with a door-to-door -door service. Uh, let me remind you that I was in a different country that day in Germany. It took me around 15 minutes about the husband, about the smile of my husband's face when I arrived was priceless. So I recommend that. <laughs> um, after this whole thing, working, working mom, now some fun, something for me, entertainment, punk six, I watched one of the blockbusters movie without even leaving my hotel room. So you may ask, where is she heading with the story? Where is she going with this one? The six points that I've just shown you is nothing else as we call digital transformation. It's the shift we see around us. It's, n it's not about the technology itself. It's about the behaviors and attitudes of the people that are changing. The whole IT business we are in right now is to support the change, is to support the shift between, for example, cinemas to your homes, is to uh, apply technologies in, place, in places where technology weren't available uh, before, like from local stores to online stores, is to support uh, ecological improvement because less paper, more mobile solution. So you may ask, where is the connection between digital transformation and business analysis? In this presentation, is about it. So. I would like to emphasize that already um, sources like International Institute of Business Analysis or Forrester or many mentioned this phenomenon and they call it the business, uh, digital business analyst. And it's a leap, at least they call it as a leap between delivering incremental value to shaping the future. 
So let's go back to the present, let's, shall we? Uh, today's business analyst in most of the companies, I'm not saying that in everyone and everyone else does the same, uh, the, the, the role in the same way, but it's described as a bridge between the business and the development team. Uh, is the person who mostly releases requirements, uh, deals with the backlog, discusses and communicates with the client about their needs. Some of the clients brutally call us a very expensive recorder and we must pr prove them wrong. When, while in digital transformation era, the business, digital business analyst who is described in the sources and in the articles that you can find on, on the internet is described as a change maker, um, partner in business, trusted advisor, or my favorite one, advocate of value. So how can we jump from one point to another? Digital transformation from pre for present BAs, um, for, for the ones that I've just described, um, w will require to learn new things. I will speak about those things in a moment. But to start to learn new things, you must be a walking excellence. The excellence in our job is the crucial point because trust that can be gained only by professional approach to things and mindset and the tools that must be on the, you know, the solid ground. The core competences of our role must be there if you want to start something new because you need to have this mindset of an, of an analyst to do more. So another key point and, and, and principle is to learn continuously. And I'm sure that during this conference yesterday, during the workshops or today uh, on the presentation, you will find many interesting um, new tools, methods, uh, thoughts that you can use in your workshop, uh, in your, in your tool set. There is a lot of events right now, webinars, meetups for those who want to learn something new in, in, for, for, in, in, in the area of the tool set of theirs. So, uh, but I would like to uh, touch another, another angle, another, another uh, topic of that. I would like to emphasize that with new technologies comes new opportunities, technological opportunities. And we need to be aware that in the basket and on, on, in the variety of those opportunities, we need to select trends wisely. We need to follow trends, but we need to select the trends wisely because selecting the wrong product may cost us money time and eventually give us nothing. So there is no, uh, the, the, what I'm saying is, is we don't uh, um, anymore just understand the technology. We need to embrace it, use it and try to figure it out if the technology is suitable for the solution. Um, staying with the technological, uh, uh, technological angle, clients are right now willing or forced to change their technology. Uh, for example, in Germany, there is a, a huge trend right now that in some of the public sectors that are even forced by law to change uh, from manual to, to, to more digital solutions. And trends like Internet of Things, uh, machine learning, vo motion recognition are no longer the buzzwords anymore. Um, at uh, my, my company, at Objectivity, we have some experience with chat point design, with digital screen creation, not to mention the low code development practice when one week of the BA's absence is more um, crucial than uh, in any other project because the speed of development is different. I myself had the chance to speak data in one of the projects where we were able to draw um, flights, uh, routes of the flights and uh, draw some anomalies and tell the pilots, pilots where the inefficiencies are, like inefficiencies in, in time and money. Those were very interesting data, I, would, I, I must say. Okay. A few times I have mentioned the word, pro, uh, the word project, but in fact, many, many times we deal with the product or even a service. And I see you, that you are nodding, so, so I'm, I'm glad. Um, BAs, when we are working on with the product, we need to see the product as a saleable item. So when we are taking into consideration and to do development some backlog product item, we need to see it in a different way. 
how it will be sold, what value will it bring to the client. We need to speak the business language to, uh, and, and, in, and to, to support the businesses they are, uh, the, 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 the business want to have, it, to support the model shift from time sometimes, from the product to a service, because the shift is also very, very important and is there already. Um, moreover, nobody will use the product if the design is good, bad. You know that, you will not buy it. Just as simple as that. I will come to design in a, in a moment, but it's very, very important to build the product that, the, that, uh, that also is saleable in the way of design. Now let me start, uh, st stop for a second, if I may, and let's make a small investigation, shall we? Um, there are CR7 Nike boots for soccer. Uh, first question, do you know how many, uh, you know, American dollars they can cost? Too much. <laughs> 300. 400. No. Huge amount of money, but what do I know about soccer? <laughs> uh, yes, but for me, it's a bit too much, too, uh, too high, uh, but let's start, here start the investigation, shall we? Uh, if I would tell you that it's June, f uh, the 3rd of June, uh, 2017, UEFA Finals, and two big giants play one another, um, Real Madrid and Juventus. The score of the match is 4 to 1. And the question for you is, who was the man of the match that day? Easy <laughs> for those who, <laughs> who, who understand how to play soccer. Um, yes, Cristiano Ronaldo was the man of that, uh, the match that day. And I'm telling you the story because the value, uh, the product had some value, 400 grams. But if we do the investigation, if I will give you an additional information about the product, you value those shoes, those particular shoes, more. Because, and I, don't, I understand you, and I, I, I fully support this uh, idea because numbers do not build value, stories are. Therefore, uh, storytelling is yet another skilled, ve skill, very, very useful in the future of the BA world. Like invest in storytelling, instead of giving number-oriented presentations, give the story to your business so they will understand more what you are saying, not just numbers that gives you nothing. Um, going back to design, I, I, you, you may probably know it as well very, very, uh, from, from your daily life, that visualization and graphics, prototyping, right now have huge popularities and is, is everywhere. Iconographic is ev in every single newspaper every single day. Um, also, design thinking is very, very often and during the uh, um, showed in the conferences and in BE world is very, very popular. Yesterday we have a workshop about it. But I dare to say that design thinking is no worse, no better than any other design process. It's just the new one, the different one in your tool set. Because of the, the nature of the problems that we should solve in the digital transformation, Design thinking comes with value because it's handy. There is an old saying, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. It's easy to use what you have in your area because it's handy, because it's easy, because it's convenient. But it's, it's, only, thinking, uh, it's only fixing the issues for the, as a current issue, but it doesn't address the underlying uh, uh, um, aspects or issues. Therefore, design thinking comes with help. Um, it's worth to mention that design and prototype being op all very often come with innovation. Let's face it, you don't have to invent to innovate. We had before a presentation about it. Take your experience from one domain and use it in another. Think big. Leave your comfort zone and try to imagine things that yesterday were impossible. Try to use it. Just, just, just simple, simple additional thing that you can uh, take from one, uh, from one domain to another. Electromobility is one of those very good examples. Uh, people want to uh, solve the very basic problem of theirs. How to get from point A to point B. 
but the gasoline problem and the future pollution of our planet forced us to find a new solution for the same basic yet very complex problem how to get from point A to point B. And that's it. The innovation comes from women. Now, I was speaking a lot about the project, about the product. I didn't mention yet about the development of the product. And very, very often uh, the methodology called ADA is, right, uh, is, is there uh, in, in many companies. Um, let's, let's face it, ADA is commodity right now. So as a BA, we need to uh, use this method in a different way. And by a different way, I mean if you understand the flexibility and bringing the value. If you understand that the Agile is not about the Agile ceremonies, it's about the customer value focus, it's about efficiency in the process, it's about the learning, continuous learning and enthusiasm and excitement in the process, then you embrace the, the agility, then you are doing the things that you should do because you understand what Agile stands for. Now, the last key point uh, to learn, I, I think, and I can recommend you, is to infuse customer empathy. It's actually about everything I said so far with a bit of emotional intelligence. Uh, if you are the, uh, the one that understands the end user, the client, if you are the one that realizes the things or problems that he, he or she haven't realized yet, then you are the dream partner in business he want to be uh, with and cooperate with. Now, during my presentation, I, um, I've touched many other roles and I'm fully aware about it. I've touched the role of the product owner, business um, salesperson, user experience specialist, consultant, um, some of the marketing given person. But let's face it, our role will be a little bit blurred right now. We will cherish for sometimes two or even three of those roles at this, in the same <laughs> person. Uh, because the border between those roles will not be so clear anymore. Uh, let's use those roles and let's work with them very, very uh, closely together. Let's use those roles in a way that we can learn from them uh, and their capabilities, their competencies can be um, f somehow connected with ours, we can learn from them, we can learn them also to improve their uh, competencies and work how we want to uh, work, uh, how can we work together uh, to do better things. Okay, um, you like questions, so uh, here's another one. Uh, maybe you know that gentleman, Clark Carroll. It's a difficult one, but maybe some of you may know. Anyone? No? Okay, um, it's difficult, as I said. Uh, Clark Kellogg is more, uh, more uh, known in the um, United States. Uh, he is the lecturer at Creativity, Design and Innovation, so he is famous, um, famous more, in, more in this uh, areas. I had, be, I had a pleasure to be his student uh, when I was in the si uh, Silicon Valley. It was around seven years ago, but the words he said back then are true as they were then, as they are now. The best way to predict the future is to design it. And we are the one that design the future. We are the one that making this role, the role that you want to be in. So um, when I've been asked about the future of business analysis, when I am um, about to ask about business analysis career path or the competencies that they should get uh, or the evolution. I'm saying that business analysts will extinct. It will not happen over the day or not. That's, that's, that's obvious. But nobody will, uh, is able to predict the future. What will happen in Wrocław, what will happen in IT in, in few years from now. So are they to say that the business won't need people to talk with development verse anymore? They will need people to understand their businesses and to embrace their businesses and to help them to build the businesses and sometimes transform the businesses in the digital transformation era. So 
I want to leave you with one last question uh, from this stage, from my side today. I'm, I'm, I'm open to, to your question in a moment. But let me ask you, are you ready to design your future? Thank you very much. Happy to answer all your questions. <laughs>